Hi, I'm Rich Loomis. I'm a third generation of the Loomis family here in Hammond, California. We were in the turkey business. And also the fair business. And also the fair business, thank you. And J.C. Loomis is? And J.C. Loomis is my grandfather who started the Farmer's Fair. And many other things in the agricultural business, the seed business, the carrot business, watermelons, lettuce. He was a, he was a all around seed man. <laughs> I guess that's what he'd say. Your buddies and your friends and whatever they had going on. And Rob would tell you that we had a good time. That was, a, that was where he met everybody. I don't know how many exhibits were actually shown, but anyway, getting back to JC. He became the first, I guess, California-sponsored fair, agricultural department of, uh, of uh, California would help back him up on it, and he was kind of politically, uh, <laughs> shall I say, connected. I don't know. <laughs> anyway, he got things done the way he wanted them done, and thus we had a fair, and that was a really good thing, and it, it just kept accelerating from that point forward. Then. In 1949-1950, my dad being in the turkey business at that time, I didn't get into that very much, but he was in the turkey business. Our first operation was in Winchester. We had a hatchery and ranch and everything down there. He decided in 1948 to build a big hatchery and they built it right next to J.C. Lewis Seed Company on Florida Avenue, which is right again next to the fairgrounds. We had a hatchery building that was about 29,000 square feet. And what it was, it was an old theater building from Camp Pond. They cut up sections and brought it down Florida Avenue from Camp Pond, and Elmo Haven built the building for us. So that hatchery become, and by the way, there's some beautiful pictures of the hatch, inside the hatchery over here that you can look at. But that hatchery in 1952, Produced 1,500,000 baby turkeys. My God. We were the largest privately owned turkey operation west of the Mississippi. Oh, God, that was a hard job. So they went all over the United States. And we shipped them all. We sh yeah, we had customers all over the place joining. One note on the hatchery uh, the coals. Yeah. They were of great use during the orange fights. We <laughs> <laughs> hey, no, 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 Jim. It was the eggs. Pardon? It was the eggs. The rotten whatever, eggs. whatever they were, yeah, yeah they weren't yeah. They weren't the chickens. They were the, the, the rotten. <laughs> <laughs> the rotten, <laughs> good recovery, good recovery. The rotten <laughs> eggs were the best part. Yeah. Orchards, grapefruits. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. And rotten, and rotten eggs. Spend a week repairing your car. <laughs> yeah. Uh, anyway, yeah, you got through it soon enough. That's a whole new, another story. <laughs> that was back in the, that was before my time. That was a good point. I didn't know this here. Anyway, uh, you did go into the turkey business yourself? Oh, then? yes, oh, yes. I you did? Know. Oh, yeah. I was in the turkey business when my dad got where it was ill health. JC come to me and he says, uh, your, your dad's not doing too well, so you're going to have to do it. I said, What's that? He said, You're going to have to run the operation. I says, Oh, okay, no problem. I'll do it. What does that mean? He says, Well, you're in charge of the whole operation, meaning that all the hiring and firing, all the buying the feed, buying the ranches, leasing the ranches, building buildings, whatever it is, you got to do it. Now we have Jack Skidmore working for us, and he'll help you. Okay. Now you got to remember, I'm 19 years old. That's a big burden. I had 49 men working for me, and I tell you what, here's the bottom line. It didn't mean whether or not 19 year olds is good or bad. What it meant was it trained me on how to deal with people in a real adverse condition. I mean, I didn't know what it was to put a thousand dollars here or ten thousand dollars over there or whatever. I mean, that was just a big deal. So we built 16 ranches. We had them in Point of San Diego County. We had them all over, all over Riverside County. And we built a, uh, because of our hatchery, we had our own breeding operation. In 1957, we, we decided, because the processing facilities were saying to the woman, I can't get the pin feathers out of these turkeys. 
well, you're going to have to do the business. We're going to quit buying them. So they come to my dad and a couple of other guys and 19th something, about 59, I guess, 60, said, no, 57, said, can you develop a white turkey that we can process that the woman's going to like? So we started working, taking a bronze turkey. We found a turkey that we thought would be a good blending uh, breed turkey uh, from Bellsville, Maryland. Brought them out here, had a bunch of eggs, and started up the pedigree program where Nelson, where Brubaker uh, uh, and Smith is now, uh, Brubaker and Colton is now. That was our pedigree office. The building behind there, that big metal building, was where we kept our eggs. We kept the eggs there separate from our hatchery because these were all pedigree, pedigree eggs segmented by ranches. We had 40 different operations going, different breeds, different pedigrees, different everything. Back in those days, they had no computers. We had paper and pencil. And we put everything, in the, that's how we kept up with the, the gene, uh, gene splits. And, oh man, that's terrible. In 19, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm quite sure I'm not going to miss this date, but it seemed to me like it was around 6, 59 or 58. We finally, oh, before that, it was 52. We developed a white turkey, and it became really popular, and that, that's why our hatcher became very busy, because everybody wanted white, white turkeys. And so we started shipping turkeys to Iowa, by airplane. I, I tell you, it's, it's quite an involved deal, but it was quite interesting too. So then the turkey began to get a little bit too big to meat. So going back to when I was young again, I come up with a, a program that we could create artificial insemination. And so I developed an, a program that artificially inseminated our turkeys. It was so good and so successful, not that it because I was good, it's because the way we did it was actually you used your brain. The University of Davis called us and says, Dr. Adler says, would you please come up here and show us what you're doing? We'd like to teach our students. So I, myself, and another guy went up to Davis, and here I am, a little punk kid, but walking up to <laughs> Well, yeah, I developed this program for this, you know. <laughs> it's quite interesting, I have to say. But uh, it's been a lovely life. I want you guys to know there's a whole lot of story I can tell you. It's not worthy for me to stand here and take all your day, but for us to, to do what we did here in Hammett was just a remarkable deal. As a family, we enjoyed life here. We lived a good life here. We're still here. I guess the best left town or something. I don't know. I can't leave. But I've been here all my life. I'm 77 years old. And I, I guess I'm going to stay here for a while. <laughs> yeah. are, are the turkeys all gone? All gone. What year did you stop the turkey production? 68. And why did you stop? The reason why my dad died. And then all of a sudden we had debt. And then all of a sudden mom said, I don't want to be in this turkey business anymore. <laughs> and all I said, oh, no, 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 we've got to stay in the turkey business. She said, no, we're not. <laughs> so we sold it to Rickabosh. And then I went, left the family, and went to work for Wall Street Arena Company. I want to stay in the turkey business. So I run the turkey operation in Georgia. And there again, it's the last time I had turkeys was 1970. But as I have to tell you, my wife didn't tell you, that, that was a lovely business. That was a hard business. You worked your butt off. But I mean, you, 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 the rewards are incredible. To see something, a little baby that went from this size, a big size, to nice. I used to be, I used to kid my family. I said, I'd go out to a ranch, go out to a pen, sit down on the ground, and these turkeys would come up. I got my shirt and I talk to him. You know this? Yeah, I can talk turkey talk. I mean, when you learn how to talk turkey, buddy, you're good. <laughs>
<laughs> it's a really large effect on the turkey business with the, art, the white turkey, the artificial insemination. That's, yes. Um, that's a we, big influence on the turkey business. When my dad died, we had 400,000 turkeys. I didn't know that. We own 400,000 turkeys. Yeah, that's a lot of turkeys. Yeah. No. Well, a lot of turkeys. Was one of your ranches, did you go up to Idlewall? A great aunt of mine went to Idlewall in the 20s. She said they had to stop the car there. It was one way each way. And there was a turkey from there. They would drive down in there. Was that one of yours? That's one of our customers. Oh, okay. Oh, he bought the little babies and then he yeah. raised them. Right. There's Bruder House out there, you know this. Yes. There's two Bruder yeah. House out there, you gotta think. Uh, you know who owns that ranch now? I have no idea. County, is Turkey Bob. Turkey Bob? Bob? That's his name. Everybody <laughs> called him Turkey Bob. He doesn't have anything to do with it, right? He's a retired general engineer, but oh, okay. he kind of looks like a turkey because he's red hair. Big Adam Dapple. Does he have a waddle too? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you process the turkeys out when you, when you oh, actually finish raising them. Real raising. good point. The processing, that, in those days, when I remember as a kid just getting started in the turkey business, it was called New York Dress. For you women that's old enough, you'll remember going in to buy a turkey, went into the butcher off, uh, butcher's office uh, store to buy a turkey. And it would be New York Dress, and the neck, the head, and all the viscera at the top. But the body, the legs, and everything was still there. Feathers were on. That was really a bad way to try to market turkey. Yeah. So, Riverside Poultry was right next to food machinery there in Riverside. It was the first processing plant in Riverside County. And then the next one, was, there were three others in LA, and there was one down in San Diego. But they become the processing uh, places for us to process turkeys, uh, uh, mainly in LA. And then they got to the point where it was so big, we were hauling turkeys clear up to Desto. By, by truck? Uh, that's another thing. Uh, <laughs> keep talking about things. We, we had, I designed, this again when I'm young. Uh, I told my dad I was going to buy a truck, and he said, "No, you're not." And I said, "Yes, I am." He watched me, so I bought a truck, and I didn't have the down payment. So I walked into the Riverside bus plant and I said, "Max, I said, I need three thousand dollars. Would you loan me three thousand dollars so I can buy a truck? I'm going to start hauling turkeys to you." He said, "Sure, I'll give it to you. Just like that, he gave me three thousand bucks. I went and bought my truck. I started hauling turkeys all over the darn place. And there's pictures of my truck over there." I designed that on a 19. Oh, Rich, didn't Gorgeous George, the wrestler, have a ranch here in Turkey's? Yeah, over in uh, Terry Valley. Oh, Terry Valley. Yeah, he, 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 he bought turkeys. <laughs> he he delivered them in the truck, baby turkeys. They came out there. He <laughs> had a perfume going on the baby turkeys before we unloaded them. That's funny. <laughs> God, it was terrible. <laughs> the smell was hot <laughs> ah, <it's> terrible. <laughs> Huh. Is there any more questions? Uh, where, where did you say the 29,000 29, square foot um, turkey building was at? In New York? Yeah, where, when they brought the building in, where was that on oh, the floor of that? Yeah. I know, but where was it? You know, the, you know where the carnival was? Yes. It was right there. Okay. Next to the old Elbrus. That, that was that, there. That, that, for them, about 100 feet this side of that white building, going toward Palm. It was two and a half acres of where the hatch was set. And you remember that, Rob? Sure. sure. But that, was that actually where they did the jams and jellies for a while, too? Yes. And then yeah. uh, the skate rink was there? The whole, the whole <coughs> department past that. Home department. It was a small one, building. One building past that. The skate rink was past yeah. yeah. the yeah. hatchery, so there yeah. was another building. That was in the fairgrounds. Yeah, but they we used to pull in there yeah. You know, or on bikes or whatever and go skating. Yeah. And then they turned that into the jams and jellies during the fair. Yeah. Or the home make and stuff. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. I thought that was the hatchery, but no. No, no, no. no that was the, the regular farmer's uh, fair building. So I wish I had it. Over there, I think there's some pictures of our hatchery. I'm not sure. Yeah. But uh, it was a big building. That is a humongous building. Oh, huge. And almost like in the center of town, pretty yeah, much. Yeah, really. yeah. Like, Myself and one other guy, one summer, we everybody was on vacation, and I told him, I said, you know what, I can't stand this brown 
fiber board ceilings. Let's, let's paint it. He said, okay. So we, we were buying our stuff from Bill Lumber Company at that time. And we went in there and bought 25 five-gallon cans of paint. And we went back and got 15 more. Wow. Well, that stuff just sucked paint up like crazy. Yeah. Huh? What color? White. <laughs> to make it cheerier for the birds. <laughs> but it was it was a very it, it's very it was a great life here. I, was, I really loved doing what I was doing when I did, and I would do it again. So I hope I entertained. Yeah, it was very, very good.